Okay, so this is a new video that is part of a whole series of videos on spin forces and a, a number of related uh, topics, um, spin force geometry, uh, spin technologies. The basic premise is that the fundamental kind of principles or principle in nature is spin or spin forces. And that means spin and counterspin. So um, what this video is called is spin formation or spin information. And it has to do with spin physics. And I had done a previous video and I had formulated an equation that was a beginning, you know, kind of a first step of a a more accurate physics uh, equation, you know, physics starting point that's more accurate than Newton or Einstein. Um, I had been looking up the principle of torque and then uh, the principle of force on, on the internet and then I saw Newton's equation force equals mass times acceleration and then I thought about it and I said well given all the stuff I've been looking at with spin that can't be correct so let me look at it and see if I can formulate the correct thing. And so the the basic, I did another formula that's similar to this one, but I've just kind of uh, streamlined it a little further. So this equation is F equals S divided by CS, which is force equals spin divided by counterspin. So what I have here is a drawing. And in this drawing, you have all of those uh, parts of the equation. This outer circle is force, then within you have this spin, and then you have these, you know, the counter spin. So you have the spin force, counter spin forces, and then the total force. So what you have is you take the total spin force, divide it by the total counter spin force or forces, and then that gives you equals the total force. And if you can quantify, when, when we can quantify this spin and these counter spins, then we can get much more uh, precise, accurate models of reality. Because um, perfect abstract geometry or, you know, vectors that kind of move in straight lines, they do not describe reality. Nothing in reality moves in a straight line. Everything in reality, it's not just that it goes in curves. Everything in reality spins and every spin force has a limit, a range, or an extent. And every spin force, as you can see in this drawing, is always coming up against and is always bounded by counter spin forces. So you cannot accurately describe reality in any sense of the term, in, in, in any kind of forces. We know that there are forces. But you cannot describe these forces accurately in any sense of the term without precisely mapping out the spin forces divided by the counter spin forces. Now, these terms like um, in Newton's equation, force is obviously real because we know things change and, and we know acceleration is real. But acceleration is what? What acceleration implies is spin. But the problem with that is it, it implies spin, but it doesn't take into account, into account counter spin. So when you, if you're going to formulate an accurate um, equation for reality, um, model of reality, you have to account for both spin and counterspin and their relationship. Now, I'm not saying this is the final equation, but it's a step in that direction. Now, E equals mc squared, it has this notion of energy, which we know there is energy, just like there's force, and those are probably very similar terms, if not identical terms. But... Um, again, mass, to me, I don't think there is such a thing as mass. I think a, a mass has to be, if there's any kind of mass, it has to be a spinning mass, a spinning substance. So even when you, when you speak of a mass um, in the, the sense of uh, Newton's equation or in the sense of Einstein's equation, I think that it's a hypothetical or a an abstract con a concept that does not accurately reflect reality unless you factor in spin. Now, of course, acceleration implies 
You know, force equals mass times acceleration implies spin, but it does not account for counterspin. That's the problem. So it's an incomplete equation. Likewise, um, Einstein's E equals mc squared, it accounts for the speed of light, which again, squared, which implies an energy, uh, which is you know comparable to force, that term force, and it implies spin, but again, there's no accounting for counterspin. And then this, this, these terms of mass, um, I think that it's problematical because we, we know that, or that I think that even if we don't know, I think that we can prove, we can test and prove that everything is based on spin and that this notion of mass is kind of an outmoded or outdated or erroneous kind of concept. In, in fact, th this notion of mass is not really, you know, it, it's a problematical concept. Just simple as that. Um, and likewise, you can't describe reality accurately without both spin and counterspin. So, yes, there are forces. Yes, there are spins. Yes, there are counterspins. The relationship between spins to counterspins is that counterspins essentially divide or, dis divide or disperse spin forces. And that's when you model reality in that way, then you can you can account for a lot of things in nature that you otherwise couldn't account for, like such as imperfections, flaws, deviations, discontinuities, um, all of these kind of things that we know are in nature. Um, because every spin force has a limit, range, or extent, and every spin force likewise is going is being you know resisted almost at every point at all times by counterspin forces and and so this is why things in nature can be potentially difficult or challenging if you don't have sufficient spin forces to resist the counterspin forces um, I don't think that the real reason that for instance uh, space shuttles have to break out of the atmosphere um, into space is because of such a thing as, as this, you know, nebulous concept of gravity, unless gravity is recognized as what it is, a spin force. In fact, the shuttles that go, you know, go up outside of the atmosphere, they have to generate a sufficient spin force to spin themselves outside of the atmosphere. So, obviously, there's more to this kind of concept, I think, than there is to Newton's uh, force equals mass uh, multiplied by acceleration or by Einstein's E equals mc squared. And likewise, there's no hypothetical concepts. Force is a quantifiable, qualifiable, um, measurable, scientific um, thing that is only based on observable, measurable spins divided by observable measurable counterspins so there's nothing we don't need to hypothesize any kind of nonsense and I had done another video about spin force calculations and this is kind of how you would calculate spin forces um, it, it doesn't really matter what the substance is it doesn't matter if you are positing an ether a fundamental ether all throughout space or it, the fundamental force as magnetism or if you're trying to describe electricity, the force of electricity, the um, forces, you know, forces of light, um, plasma, gas, liquid, solid, it doesn't matter what it is. Everything can be mapped precisely by this equation. Force equals spin divided by counterspin, period. And you just have to be able to account for the, the spin force versus the counterspin forces and if you can isolate them or at least you know to a reasonable degree isolate them then you can get much more exact precise measurements and we can make you know a, a totally accurate um, spin physics based on a totally precise uh, spin force geometry and we can make spin technologies way beyond what we've been doing up to now which we're trying to do linear technologies in a you know, in nature, which is based on spin and counterspin. There are no straight lines. There never were. There never will be. And they just, they can't work in nature. Not anywhere near like 
um, spin-based technologies can. Now, there's another point I just want to touch on. I'm, I'm going to bring this to a close, but time is a measure of quantities of spin force. So I think that's a much more practical way to look at time. Um, instead of looking at it as an abstraction or as some real thing that's out there, time is a measure of quantities of spin force, period. That's it. So just think about it and see what that means. Um, now there's just one, one final point, um, which is when you're describing uh, these spin forces versus these counter spin forces, um, I don't know how clear these, these drawings will be, but what you have is two principles. You have quantity and you have quality. Um, so, so for instance, on this side you have quality. So what you have here, what I'm showing here, is a spin force of a certain quality. In other words, I guess you could say of a certain force relative to a counter spin force of a certain force or a certain quality. And then what I'm showing on this side is quantity. So you have in the center there, uh, you have one spin force, but then you have eight of these counter spin forces. So you have those two principles, the quality of relative uh, spin, for of spin forces relative to counter spin forces and the quantity of spin forces relative to counter spin forces. And then in this drawing in the middle, I kind of put them together. So you have a certain, you have quantities of, of, of spin forces going across here. One, two, three, it looks like four or five of them. So I did five of them going like this and they taper off. So as they're, the quantity of these five, prior, you know, uh, spin forces are going across here, they're, they have a quantity of five, but their quality, their force is diminishing as they keep going. Likewise, the counter spin forces, it's interesting that they're, I didn't, I, I just noticed this as I was drawing it, it it's kind of like, well, they, they kind of diminish as well along with the force, but where there's a larger, you know, spin force, obviously there's going to be a larger counter spin force. But what you have is the, the, um, the quality of the spin forces or the for counter spin forces or the force of them is directly relative to the quality of spin force or the force inherent in, in the, you know, spin force relative to the counter spin force, and that the quantity of uh, counter spin forces is also relative to the quantity of spin forces. So um, I hope that that wasn't, you know, confusing. But the point is, is that um, this is how you do physics. This is real physics. All the rest is, you know, theories loosely tied together and often highly unrelated from scientific evidence. This kind of theory right here is can be tested. It can be observed. You can see it for yourself. In, in almost anything in nature, you can see that everything is based on, not just on abstract forces, but it's more specific than that. It's, it's forces of spin divided or dispersed or even absorbed by forces of counterspin. This is nature. This is reality. This is spin physics. This is um, what we, the kind of principles, the kind of equations that we need to base our spin force geometry on. And this is the kind of uh, equation that we need to utilize to do our scientific research to really understand the, the spin forces and counterspin forces in nature and to devise our spin-based technologies. Um, all of our technologies, in essence, are really spin force technologies. Everything in nature is some sort of expression of spin and counterspin, or spin versus or relative to counterspin. And so all of our technologies, to be most efficient, our designs to be the best that they can be, must be based on this principle of spin relative to counterspin. Thanks.